pure, unpolluted waters are precious, but they're hard to find, even in Ireland. 30 years ago, there were over 500 totally unpolluted freshwater sites that were wild and natural. Now only 21 of these still have the highest water quality. Kerry is one of our few remaining places where pristine waters can still be found, and the life in these rivers and lakes reflects the purity of the water. I've come here to find Ireland's longest living animal, Andulakeen Perla, the freshwater pearl mussel. They live to be about 120 years old. That means that lots of the pearl mussels living in these waters were alive during the 1916 rising. But they only live in really clean, unpolluted waters. That means they're extinct in most of Ireland's rivers. So why have we seen such a rapid decline in our rivers and lakes in such a short time? And what can be done to bring them back to better health? The peninsula in Kerry is incredibly beautiful. Because it's such a sparsely populated mountainous region, it's one of the few places left in Ireland with pristine water quality, where untamed and unpolluted rivers are rich with wildlife. The McGillicuddy's Reeks are wonderfully dramatic mountains to explore, and I want to follow this river to its source, which is the highest quality water you can find in Ireland. Local mountain guide, Derek Omorhu, is helping me to navigate. It's not a great day for a hike, is it? No, no, it's quite wild, but like, it's just great to be out there anyways. Like, There's know. such Look a huge that. volume of water. Yes, it, it's, it's amazingly pristine water. It just comes from the mountains, the background in, up there. There's a couple of beautiful lakes up there and really lovely mountain streams feeding it. In the Ivra Peninsula, though, in particular, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, depending on what figures you go look at, maybe up to 3,000 millimetres a year, which is quite a lot, like, you That's know. three metres a year. Yeah, three metres, maybe even more, you know, uh, especially around here, this valley here, especially. What's that amazing looking crag thing up there? They call it the Hag's Tooth. And of course, this whole valley is called the Hag's Glen or Calm Collie. Yeah, yeah so. so that's her tooth. Yeah, that's her tooth up there. She's lost her tooth. Okay. Is that a frog? Wow. How are you, frog? <laughs> Pretty much where the path is, is where is the, the water is coming down. The water drains down where the path was. Wow. It's really, really beautiful. I'm glad we... we Yes. Yeah, trekking on through the yeah, rain. Yeah, yeah, well worth it. You know, it's good to see where it all comes from. You know, yeah. all the water that we drink, this kind of place is where, where it is, where it starts off. It was too misty to see Carantool, the mountain that rises up behind the lakes. But I've seen what I came to see, the source of this pristine river. The rivers and lakes in this region are beautifully clean and healthy. They're ranked as Q5, which is the best possible water quality. I had heard that the freshwater pearl mussel lives here, a species that's become very rare and hard to find. To find out more about them, I met up with Richard O'Callaghan from the Kerry Life Project. The project team is trying to develop new approaches to protect this species in these catchments. This is home to one of the largest populations of mussels in Ireland. So there's about two and a half million mussels here. Two and a half million freshwater pearl mussels in this river? Yeah, they're not all in one stretch of the river, but you have a huge population. 
and you, your project is about keeping this water pristine. Absolutely, and the, the mussel requires even higher than pristine in some ways, and that's really what we're trying to ensure. What we have is uh, a species that has really high standards. And how come this river here is such high water quality? The main reason is that we don't have the same pressures in terms of land use. The land itself isn't suitable for intensive agriculture or, in, or housing or urban areas. We've no town in this area, for example. In these sorts of catchments, agriculture and forestry are the two main land uses that we have. And what are the actual impacts of farming and of forestry on, on the river that would damage the habitat for the freshwater pearl mussel? The main issues are excess silt, which is a fine sediment or soil that gets washed off the land from farming or drainage or from forestry. Nutrients, so when they apply slurry or fertiliser in these high rainfall areas, there's a chance that it'll get washed out into the river and that causes issues for the mussel down the line. If you get too much nutrient input, you get huge quantities of algae growing in the river. So that's so really the So it's not something, you don't need like a load of toxic chemicals, it's just soil, sand, silt, nutrients, these kind of everyday things. There's a bit more getting to the river now, and that might be because there's more machinery being used on, in farming and forestry. But we're fortunate in these areas that we don't have that, that level of pressure. And this is just one of the best chances we have to keep the species viable here in Ireland. So this region is a last hold for the freshwater pearl mussel, which is such a sensitive life form, but so quietly resilient too. You have to be careful and respectful of them in their natural habitat. <laughs> 